Heavy. We will make you suffer. Do you understand? Yes, yes. Matron. Matron. Do you understand? Are you two, five, six, two, nine. Matron! I caught him. You snitched on him. I think the paint might be making the farm sick. If they can walk, they can work. Hetty, go home. If Gideon stays, I stay. He's my family brother. Every year, Matron held a charity lunch and concert for the governors. And that only meant one thing for senior foundlings. Hymns. We are Long, boring hymns. This morning, Matron looked particularly cross. Probably as our music teacher in us, Winterson, mysteriously hadn't arrived. some fancy composer had written a new hymn especially. That meant for the first time boys and girls rehearsed together. Well, together-ish. Beautiful. Thank you. Such impressive work for only a week. It was beautiful music, Mr Melrose. Oh, it's just a little ditty, really. <laughs> Mr Lardy Dar was Machen's guest of honour. He ran a choir school in the back of beyond, probably so no one could complain about the noise. I think the first verse would work better as a solo. Don't you agree? Ah, oh, yes, that could be arranged when I'm... Ah. My apologies, Matron. Mr. Melrose. Oh, I'm sure a fly-in is well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Melrose thinks the first verse should be a solo, so if you could choose your singer and make sure they're up to it. Right. Mr. Melrose, shall we? Oh, my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Back to it then. Why do we ever only sing hymns? Technically, Hattie, this isn't a hymn, it is a chorale. Is all music this boring? You don't really mean that, do you? You could audition for the solo. I'm all right, thanks. Are you going to audition? Obviously. Donated by Handel, wasn't it? Mm. The heart of our hospital. A symbol of its musical traditions. <laughs> So sad the hospital can't afford its upkeep. We really are in danger of losing it forever. Sad to see it fall into disrepair. Well, it would be crude of me to leave without offering some token of thanks. After all your hard work. Oh. How about uh, £100? Hmm? That should cover Handel's ruddy monstrosity, don't you think? <laughs> Back to your wings. Uh, Monica, walk! Do not run! Sounds like a French horn. Say, <laughs> who is so high and good and great? Very good, Sheila. Thank you. Gideon? Can Gideon sing? He could when we were little, but I haven't heard him since. Barely opens his mouth in music. Mm. Yeah. Everything 
okay? Yeah. Yeah, just... Yeah. And girls, shh. We are but little children, poor and born in very low estate. What can we do for Jesus' sake? Who is so high and good and great? Right. So, how would you like the solo, Gideon? Sorry, girls. Maybe next time. Whoa. You kept that secret. Mr. Melrose's choir school takes a dozen students every year. If you sing for Mr. Melrose before the lunch, just like you sang for me now, you never know. What? He only started singing five minutes ago. Now you want him to join a choir school? Better than getting chucked in the army. What well done, mate. Did he didn't have to leave? Of course not. But he's good. You heard him, and Mr. Melrose will too. What then? Talent doesn't do much hidden away, Hetty. My father taught me that. Does he sing? He used to, in musicals. And now? He's a war veteran. I look after him. That's why I'm here. If I didn't work, we'd end up on the street. What's music hall? Stage shows. Songs, comedy, dances. Can you teach us? Something the matter? It's Nurse Winterson. Yes, late. I know. She's been out all night gallivanting at the music hall. She only got back first thing this morning. She dropped this on the way in. <laughs> Matron. A word, nurse. Go to your dorms. It is just a song, Matron. What devilry you enjoy in your spare time is your own concern. But influencing the children, that is unforgivable. Matron, I'm sorry. The ticket was a gift from a friend. I never meant... You are relieved of your duties. What? You will clear your belongings and leave within the hour. Please. You can't really... I don't really... My father... Pack your things and go. used to matron taking every nice thing we had. But Nurse Winterson was the last straw. <sighs> if Winterson did something wrong, then she deserved to be punished. She only went to a music hall. The matron had it in for her. She still broke the rules. Her dad's sick. She worked so she couldn't look after him. She probably only wanted one night off. We've got to get her back somehow. Whatever we do, it's still up to Matron. If she doesn't like Winterson, then... We could protest. Or strike. I read the story in one of Ness Macclesfield's journals. These girls at a matchstick factory were getting sick because of the poisonous stuff they were putting into the matches. And they were getting paid barely anything for it, too. So one day, they refused to work until the boss agreed to change things. Obviously, the boss said no, but when the girls stopped working, the factory didn't make any money, so eventually the boss had to give in. 
Matron's desperate for us to impress Melrose, so if we refuse to sing until she gets Winterson back, she'd have to give in. Matron will just punish us. She can't punish everyone. If we're together, we're protected. We'll outnumber her like 30 to 1. So how do we get the other 22 on side? I thought it was going to be easy. Oh, nobody wants to strike. You can't strike on our own. I know, just in how to get people to sign up. Just make them. Make who? Do what? Don't be dumb. If I was going to rat, I'd have done it already. Look, everyone's scared of Machen. You can't nag them into striking. You have to make it worth their while. You mean bribe them? I mean negotiate. And you don't have to do anything. I can do it. Why? What's in it for you? I want the solo at the concert. But Winston gave it to Gideon. Matron won't care. It would only be if the strike works, and Gideon will be so happy to have Winston back, he won't care less about the solo. Matthias was having more success getting the boys to sign up. What do you want for it? What's your price? One week of washing up. He'd worked out that everyone has their price. Anyone else? What else? Three days extra food. Yeah. Four days of laundry duties. Deal. 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 With no music teacher anymore, we had to endure Nurse Macclesfield at the piano. Summon rain. What is it? We've left it upstairs. What? Oh, the paper. With all our names. Matron. Who made this? Mr. Cranbourne, take everyone on this list to my office. They will all be caned. No. It was my idea, Matron. I wanted Nurse Winderson back. I took boys into it. Matron, it was me. It was my idea. And mine. No, miss, it was us. It was me. It was me. No, it was me. No, Matron, it was me. It was us. No, we did it. We did it. It was me. Sit down. It was all of us. Give Nurse Winston her job back. Who do you think you are? What is this? Get up! This is a strike. Do what you like. Just force us to go to your stupid concert tomorrow if that's what you want. But we won't sing a single note unless you get Nurse Winterson back. You can't make us. Hmm. We'll see if I can't. Now what? No, hold tight. We have to get them dispersed before the lunch. Dispersed? They're children, Nurse Macclesfield, not dock workers. They're organised is what they are. And that feather girl, well, she's their blooming master at arms. Maybe we ought to reinstate Winterton. I mean, we can't cancel the lunch. It's tomorrow. This is my hospital. 
I will not be corralled. I will not reverse decisions for children. However it is done, we break up their riot and we break feather. Children, children, you must all be very hungry. Mm. And there's plenty more in the dining hall. Come, come and eat. And you have my word, you will not be punished. But be in no doubt that when this strike breaks, and break it will, those who do not surrender will be punished, severely and permanently. We're not going anywhere. And you speak for everyone, do you? I just wanted extra dinner. That's what you promised us. I'm not starving for you lot. Come on, it's just a few hours. We're done for anyway. What's the point? Good boy. Well done. Mechon's bluffing. She's doing this because she's desperate. We are winning. We can't back down now. Very well. That didn't feel like winning. Why did you have to go and promise people stuff? Make sure you just trump us every time. It wasn't just us, though, was it? What do you mean? Hetty said if I got everyone to join her strike, she'd make sure I got the solo and not Gideon. She's been making deals just like the rest of us. Why would you do that? We needed everyone, Gideon. We? You mean you needed everyone? There'll be other solos. Not like this one. And you knew that. It's not about you, all right? This is about getting Winston back. No. It's completely about you. Do your stupid singing. Let Melrose take you to his choir school. I don't care. Gideon. Gideon, wait. Winterson gave up everything to look after other people. All we care about is ourselves. Who sat with you when you were scared of the dark? And who didn't rat you out to Matron when you wet the bed? Winterson was so kind to us. We should be striking for her and not ourselves. I felt angry, but I was angry at myself too. I felt awful about Gideon. But I knew we remaining strikers had to stand firm. The day of the concert had arrived and the fancy guests were gathering. But Matron still didn't have enough singers for her showpiece performance. Matron? Oh, Matron, I am so excited to hear the children. Ah, oh, as excited as they are to sing for you, Mr. Melrose. Well, I should hope so too, with my generous donation in the balance. Hmm. I'd like to see them before they go on. Help calm the nerves a bit. I think uh, they are rehearsing, Mr Melrose. Ah. Mm. Why don't I go and check? Of course. guests are here. I know. It's a shame, too. Little Gideon was seeming so excited about singing. He's very gifted. I heard him practicing. But without everyone present, I'm afraid I shall simply have to cancel the concert. No, you won't. 
You need us to sing for Melrose. You're bluffing. You're right. I didn't want to have to say this, but you leave me a little choice. <sighs> if you do not give up and come to the chapel in five minutes, I will send Gideon to the Tench for a month. Do you want to know if I'm still bluffing? You can't. You said you wouldn't punish them if they surrendered. It's all up to you, Hetty. It is your decision. Five minutes or Gideon goes to the Tench. Maybe... Maybe we should just go. No, I'm not giving up my solo just because Gideon got selfish. Yeah. We can't just let Matron chuck Gideon in the tent. Who cares about Gideon? I do, he's my friend! It was a nightmare. If I stayed, Gideon got the tent. If I left, Winterson would never come back. Gideon's fate was on me. I don't care! Not Hetty! Hetty, where are you going? I'm not letting Gideon get punished because of me. You can stay here if you want, but I'm going. What happened? Matron was going to chuck you in the tent if Hetty didn't give up. If you stand at the front, you will be soloist. Do not think this spares you punishment. Do not think it spares any of you. This is my hospital, and you do not have a say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Foundling Hospital and our glorious chapel where, years ago, George Friedrich Handel debuted his masterpiece, the first foundling anthem. We too shall debut a very special work, a brand new foundling anthem, written especially for this event by our esteemed guest, Mr. Jacob Melrose. Mr. Melrose has also kindly offered a substantial donation towards the upkeep of the hospital's organ, the queen to the hospital by Handel himself. So thank you once again, Mr. Melrose, and thank you all for coming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our families. Where did you get that hat? Where did you get that tile? Isn't it an obi one or just the proper style? I should like to have one just the same as that. Wherever I go, they shout hello! Where did you get that hat? After that, uh, that popular opening, let us move on to the pièce de résistance. <sighs> that was really good. Man. That was incredible. You were so good, <laughs> Gideon. That was amazing. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said what I did. <laughs> it's all right. You just wanted to help Winston. Oh, marvellous. Just brilliant. You wrote a wonderful piece, Mr. No, 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 the vaudeville, the music hall. How on earth did you learn that? Nurse Winterson, I'll teach you to all sorts. Nurse Winterson, of course. Well, well, where is she? I really must thank her. She got the sack. Is this true? She was a bad influence. She is a musician, isn't she? But this is a hospital. And musical education is part of what makes this hospital special, Matron. I wouldn't have my donation funded otherwise. Get the girl back, eh? 
Of course, Mr. Melrose. Now then, uh, what's your name? Gideon, sir. Oh, Gideon, uh, you're a little young for a school like mine and a little raw, but uh, what say myself and your Winterson give you some private tuition a couple of times a month? See where we are next year, eh? Welcome. All right, all right. Back into bed. Come on. Lights out, girls. We'll see each other in the morning. I hear I've got you to thank, Hetty. No, thank you, Liam. You know, Matron doesn't just forgive and forget. You all need to be very careful now. Go to sleep. We'd done it. Winterson was back at the hospital. But she was right about Matron. She always held a grudge and never forgave or forgot. We would all have to look out for each other. I had a feeling things were going to get tricky. This is Sergeant Cragg. He's here to select a new drummer boy for his regiment. Don't make soap and water! Get off me! Go! You'll be skivvies. Go! Go! President of the flag contest. Winner gets to join the army. Get off him! The only way I touch it, I get! Oh, so scared! Move up away! I'm not afraid of you. Or anyone. I'm a general.